Okay, welcome to my analysis of the first presidential debate. Now, I'm gonna do something pretty shocking. I'm going to try to make this analysis based on the facts without the political spin. Let's see what happens. Now, first, if you want to see my live reaction to the debate with my friend Uncivil Law, just click on the link that appears above the screen and it will take you to that. But I want to remove any political bias from this debate and just kind of give you the hard facts of what happened. So here we go. Now, in this debate, there were about 18 unique questions covering most of the debate. These questions cover topics such as the economy, immigration, abortion, health care, foreign policy, January 6th and climate change. Now, the moderators fact-checked former President Trump five times on some of his major claims regarding crime, election interference, and immigration, while they fact-checked Harris two times about her shifting stance on things like tariffs and fracking. Now, the first question of the debate was, I like to call it the Reagan question. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? Here's Ronald Reagan saying it to Jimmy Carter. Tuesday, all of you will go to the polls, will stand there in the polling place and make a decision. I think when you make that decision, it might be well if you would ask yourself, are you better off than you were four years ago? Now, Vice President Harris being number two in the current administration, the moderator asked, do you believe voters are better off now than they were four years ago? Are you better off than you were four years ago? When it comes to the economy, do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? Now, Vice President Harris did not answer that question directly. She focused on, quote, helping the middle class through middle class tax cuts, supporting small businesses, and then criticized President Trump's plan as the, quote, Trump sales tax, claiming that it would raise taxes on middle class families by about $4,000 annually. My opponent has a plan that I call the Trump's sales tax, which would be a 20% tax on everyday goods that you rely on to get through the month. Economists have said that that Trump sales tax would actually result for middle class families in about $4,000 more a year because of his policies and his ideas about what should be the backs of middle class people paying for tax cuts for billionaires. Now, Harris also sidestepped the fact that many of Trump's tariffs that he put in place during his administration, which she referred to as a sales tax, were kept in place under the Biden administration. And this weakened her critique of Trump's plan. Now, Trump obviously denied Harris's characterization of his tariffs as a sales tax and pointed out this fact that, hey, if the tariffs are a sales tax, the Biden administration kept the tariffs on. And the tariff will be substantial in some cases. I took in billions and billions of dollars, as you know, from China. In fact, they never took the tariff off because it was so much money they can't. It would totally destroy everything that they've set out to do. They're taking in billions of dollars from China and other places. They've left the tariffs on. When I had it, I had tariffs and yet I had no inflation. Uh, look, we've had a terrible economy because inflation has, which is really known as a country buster, it breaks up countries. We have inflation like very few people have ever seen before. Now first, thank you to the sponsor of this video, Ground News. Now let's talk about who won the Harris-Trump presidential debate. And with Ground News, you can easily see how both sides are reacting to who they believe won the debate. As an example, let's go to the far left, the Palmer Report. Headline, Harris is winning this debate in huge fashion as Donald Trump melts down. Next, we're gonna go to the right wing, the Gateway Pundit and see what they say. Headline, Trump hits Harris on illegal immigration right out the gate in presidential debate. Now, one of the best things about Ground News is that it's all in one place. You get over 655 articles based on whether they're left-leaning, right-leaning, or center. And my favorite feature, the blind spot, where you get to see if stories are being overreported or underreported by the left or right wing. Now, if you want to see every side to every story, go to ground.news forward slash Nate. That's ground.news forward slash Nate to get 40% off the Vantage plan. That means you're going to get to stay informed and get to see everything that I see every day when I do my research. Again, go to ground.news forward slash Nate or scan a QR code on the screen. 
Now, back to the video. Now next, let's look at the discussion on immigration and border security. Turn now to immigration and border security. We know it's an issue that's important to Republicans, Democrats, voters across the board uh, in this country. Vice President Harris, you were tasked by President Biden with getting to the root causes of migration from Central America. We know that illegal border crossings reached a record high in the Biden administration. This past June, President Biden imposed tough new asylum restrictions. We know the numbers since then have dropped significantly. But my question to you tonight is why did the administration wait until six months before the election to act? And would you have done anything differently from President Biden on this? Now, Harris criticized Trump for the bipartisan border bill that would have added more agents and stemmed the flow of fentanyl. However, she avoided directly answering the question you just heard. She focused on casting Trump as someone who prefers to run on a problem, border security, rather than fixing it. That's why he killed the border deal. That the United States Congress, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Senate, came up with a border security bill, which I supported. And that bill would have put 1,500 more border agents on the border to help those folks who are working there right now over time, trying to do their job. It would have allowed us to stem the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States. I know there are so many families watching tonight who have been personally affected by the surge of fentanyl in our country. That bill, would have put more resources to allow us to prosecute transnational criminal organizations for trafficking in guns, drugs, and human beings. But you know what happened to that bill? Donald Trump got on the phone, called up some folks in Congress, and said, kill the bill. And you know why? Because he'd prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. Now, I know you're going to be expecting how did former President Donald Trump respond to the allegations of VP Harris? Now, at this point, I do want to point out a very successful debate tactic that Harris employed to throw Donald Trump off of the topic at hand. So what VP Harris did was throw poison pills into her answers and use them as bait to have Trump focus on something else rather than a topic at hand. Remember, we're talking about immigration. So she says that, for instance, his rallies are BS and nobody's enjoying them and people are falling asleep. Here's exactly what she said. And I'm going to actually do something really unusual. And I'm going to invite you to attend one of Donald Trump's rallies because it's a really interesting thing to watch. You will see during the course of his rallies, he talks about fictional characters like Hannibal Lecter. He will talk about windmills cause cancer. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. And I will tell you, the one thing you will not hear him talk about is you. You will not hear him talk about your needs, your dreams, and your, ne and your desires. And I'll tell you, I believe you deserve a president who actually puts you first. And I pledge to you that I will. Now, the moderator seemingly understands what Harris is doing and tries to focus Trump back on the overall question, immigration. But Trump falls into the trap. would so, like to respond. Let me just ask, though, why did you try to kill that bill and successfully so that would have put thousands of additional agents and officers on the border? First, let me respond as to the Please. rallies. She said people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. And the people that do go, she's busing them in and paying them to be there and then showing them in a different light. So she can't talk about that. People don't leave my rallies. We have the biggest rallies, the most incredible rallies in the history of politics. That's because people want to take their country back. Our country is being lost. We're a failing nation. And it happened three and a half years ago. And what, what's going on here, you're going to end up in World War III, just to go into another subject, as far as rallies are concerned as far as the reason they go is they like what I say. They want to bring our country back. They want to make America great again. It's a very simple phrase. Make America great again. She's destroying this country. Now, remember, the question was about immigration and the immigration bill that was killed in Congress. And Trump focused in on his rally size, defending the fact that people come to his rallies and the size of his rallies, rather than the substance of the question. Because, again, they were talking about the immigration bill. And this was the theme of the night. Harris would drop a poison pill and Trump would respond to the poison pill, leaving him little time to respond to the substantive question. Now, former President Trump did address the border bill issue. But later in the discussion, he essentially said they have the power to close the the border down now and they choose not to do it. Here is his exact response. 
Go down to, because she's been so bad, it's so ridiculous. Go down to Washington, D.C. and let her sign a bill to close up the border. Because they have the right to do it. They don't need bills. They have the right to do it. The President of the United States, you'll get him out of bed, you'll wake him up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, right. you'll say, come on, come on down to the office, let's sign a bill. If he, if he signs a bill that the border is closed, all he has to do is say it to the Border Patrol, who are phenomenal. If they do that, the border is closed. Mr. Those President, people are killing many people, wanna, unlike J6. Now, the next topic that we're going to look at is how both candidates handled the abortion question. I want to turn to the issue of abortion. President Trump, you've often touted that you were able to kill Roe v. Wade. Last year, you said that you were proud to be the most pro-life president in American history. Then last month, you said that your administration would be great for women and their reproductive rights. In your home state of Florida, you surprised many uh, with regard to your six-week abortion ban because you initially had said that it was too short and you said quote i'm going to be voting that we need more than six weeks but then the very next day you reversed course and said you would vote to support the six-week ban vice president harris says that women shouldn't trust you on the issue of, of abortion because you've changed your position so many times now this is what things get interesting trump flatly denied that he would sign a national abortion ban and emphasized that abortion is now a state issue contradicting harris's claims that trump wants to ban abortion nationally however when he was asked directly if he would veto a national abortion ban if it came to his desk he avoided giving a definitive answer and as far as the abortion ban no I'm not in favor of abortion ban, but it doesn't matter because this issue has now been taken over by the states. Would you veto a na national abortion ban if it came well, to Well, I won't desk? have to because, again, uh, two things. Number one, she said she'll go back to Congress. She'll never get the vote. It's impossible for her to get the vote, uh, especially now with the 50-50, essentially 50-50 in both Senate and the House. She's not going to get the vote. Now, in contrast, VP Harris pointed out that Trump's handpicked Supreme Court justices were responsible for overturning Roe versus Wade, and she claimed that Trump would sign the national abortion ban, even though obviously he says he would not. Now, an interesting part did come up where Harris was pressed on a compromise for abortion restrictions. Would you allow abortions in the eighth month or ninth month of pregnancy? And she didn't really address it, kind of leaving it open. Here is what she said. Vice President Harris, want to give you your time to respond, but I do want to ask, would you support any restrictions on a woman's right to an abortion? I absolutely support reinstating the protections of Roe v. Wade. And as you rightly mentioned, nowhere in America is a woman carrying a pregnancy to term and, and, and asking for an abortion. That is not happening. It's insulting to the women of America. So now the debate moved to health care. When asked about his plan to replace Obamacare, Trump acknowledged that he didn't have a current plan, but he had some concepts and he promised to introduce something at a later date. He president Trump, this is now your yes. third time running for president. You have long vowed to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, yeah. also known as Obamacare. You have failed to accomplish that. You now say you're going to keep Obamacare, quote, unless we can do something much better. Right. Last month, you said, quote, we're working on it. So tonight, nine years after you first started running, do you have a plan? And can you tell us what it is? Obamacare was lousy health care. Always was. It's not very good today. And what I said, that if we come up with something and we are working on things, we're going to do it and we're going to replace it. Less money and be better health care than Obamacare, then I would absolutely do it. But until then, I'd run it as good as it can be run. So just a yes or no, you still do not have a plan. I have concepts of a plan. I'm not president right now. But if we come up with something, I would only change it if we come up with something that's better and less expensive. And there are concepts and options we, we have to do that and you'll be hearing about it in the not too distant future. Now, on the other side, Vice President Harris laid out her plan to strengthen Obamacare. As I've been Vice President and we over the last four years have strengthened the Affordable Care Act, we have allowed for the first time Medicare to negotiate drug prices on behalf of you, the American people. Donald Trump said he was gonna allow Medicare to negotiate pr drug prices, he never did, we did. And now we have capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. Since I've been vice president, we have capped the cost of prescription medication for seniors at $2,000 a year. And when I am president, we will do that for all people. Un and the plan has to be to strengthen the Affordable Care Act, not get rid of it, pass this prologue in terms you. of where Donald Trump stands on that. I
So now, earlier we spoke about abortion and Trump's varying positions on abortion. But now, the moderators chose to point out VP Harris's changing positions. A lot of her more radical left-wing positions have seemed to become more moderate as she ran for president. Here is the clip. To Lindsay. Vice President Harris, in your last run for president, you said you wanted to ban fracking. Now you don't. You wanted mandatory government buyback programs for assault weapons. Now your campaign says you don't. You supported decriminalizing border crossings. Now you're taking a harder line. I know you say that your values have not changed. So then why have so many of your policy positions changed? So my values have not changed, and I'm going to discuss every one of the at least every point that you've made but in particular let's talk about fracking because we're here in Pennsylvania I made that very clear in 2020 I will not ban fracking I have not banned fracking as vice president of the United States and in fact I was the tie-breaking vote on the Inflation Reduction Act which opened new leases for fracking my position is that we have got to invest in diverse sources of energy so we reduce our reliance on foreign oil we have had the largest increase in domestic oil production in history because of an approach that recognizes that we cannot over rely on foreign oil. So now here's Trump's response to Kamala's changing positions, particularly on fracking. Fracking? She's been against it for 12 years. Uh, defund the police. She's been against that forever. She gave all that stuff up very wrongly, very horribly, and everybody's laughing at it, okay? They're all laughing at it. She gave up at least 12 and probably 14 or 15 different policies. Like, she was big on defund the police. In Minnesota, she went out, wait a minute, I'm talking now, if you don't mind, please. Does that sound familiar? She went out, she went out in Minnesota, and wanted to let criminals that killed people, that burned down Minneapolis, she went out and raised money to get them out of jail. She did things that nobody would ever think of. Now she wants to do transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison. This is a radical left liberal that would do this. She wants to confiscate your guns, and she will never allow fracking in Pennsylvania. If she won the election, fracking in Pennsylvania will end on day one. No. Obviously, this is a truncated version of the two-hour debate, which is linked in the description. All right, so here's the bottom line for me. Throughout the debate, both candidates frequently dodge direct answers to specific questions. It's politics. That's what you're going to do. Now, first, I want to say both candidates remain entrenched in their narratives, often recycling their core talking points rather than addressing the moderator's questions or providing any detailed solutions. As an example, Harris avoided engaging any of the fiscal or logistical realities of her policies. Immigration, health care, climate change. You name it. And Trump avoided policy specifics by pivoting to general criticisms of the Biden-Harris administration. Now, at the end of the day, everyone's going to look at this debate through their own lens. The Republicans are saying this. The biggest win for either candidate tonight, and I do think it was a win for Donald Trump, is clarifying his position on abortion, which has been completely mangled by the Kamala Harris and Biden campaigns and the media, claiming that he would somehow sign a federal abortion ban which, by the way, he has been consistently against. I thought his opportunity to level directly both with the moderators and with Kamala Harris to be crystal clear on that position and then turn it back on her to leave open a question she did not answer and I think will not answer. What her position actually is on month six, seven, eight, nine, I thought was one of the more brilliant moments in the debate. The other part that I liked was where he actually captured the essence of it, where he said, we could end this debate right now. You could go sign either a bill or an executive action to close the border. She had nothing to say. And I think those were the two most powerful moments of the night. Yeah, Vivek, stand by. We've got Tulsi Gabbard, as you can see, with us now. Tulsi, your thoughts, because you look at social media and a lot of people, even Republicans, thought the former president took the bait a lot tonight, much more than he should have. Uh, I saw something uh, quite different, Trace. What I saw was President Trump staying very focused on the issues that are most important to the American people continuously, no matter what kind of lies uh, or, or baiting attempts Kamala Harris or the moderators threw at him. He kept coming back to the issues that the American people are concerned about. He kept coming back to Kamala Harris's 
unbroken border and the fact that that's causing incredible hardship and people to be afraid to walk on their own streets. Now, this is how MSNBC saw the debate. That I'm debate. trying to be I'm good. Gonna, I'm going to see what you're going to tell me. You good. think of the debate that you told me in the hallway. What was your take on the debate, Michael? Still go ahead. What was the key moment? She spanked that ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what she did. So now tell me where I'm going to comment section. Tell me what I left out. And last but not least, tell me which side do you agree with? Do you agree with MSNBC that Trump got his behind spanked? Or do you agree with Fox News that Trump had the better of the debate? Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, do all the great YouTube stuff. My name is Ate Lori, and I'm going to check you on the next one. Peace.